Alrighty, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to swap through weapons using the mouse wheel using Strux. So I've already started the project here. I have a player character with some basic movement. I've got four different weapons, all of which will be uh, positioned above the character at all times and pointing towards the mouse. Every weapon is the same, aside from its color, but we can only use the green gun right now. So we want to make it so that he can have all of these weapons here. Um, if I collide with that right now, it's going to show us that error because these are unlockables, but um, I haven't set up the variables and uh, object yet, which will allow us to switch between different guns. So we're going to do that right now by creating a new object called O Weapons Controller. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to the room, and I'm just going to drag and drop it in there, because sometimes I forget. Create. I'm going to do some little variables here. I is going to uh, indicate which gun we're currently on. Um, I'll show that momentarily. And let's see. Okay. Just referencing my initial file. Yes. Okay. So max weapons, that's going to be a variable for um, however many weapons we have. Current gun will be the gun we are holding. Right now it's the first one, so it's O-Gun 1. And now it's time for the Strux. So, gun. We're going to make an array, and that space where the zero is currently, that is going to be replaced with I in the logic so we can always scroll through which gun we're on. But all of that will make sense shortly. equals O gun one. We don't need that. What's this now? Copy and paste that for however many weapons you have. And yes, um, I have four weapons, but I have three because uh, in the code uh, we start at zero. So I'm going to change each, each gun's object. And we're going to lock some of these later, but for now we're going to keep them unlocked to make testing the changing of the Uh, weapons uh, just much easier to test. All right. Let's wheel up. Okay. 
instance exists current gun. Uh, there's, yeah. This is just going to check to make sure that the uh, current gun exists before it executes this code. Right. We're going to do a little for loop here. I equals to start I. Um, this is so that we'll always start at a different position depending on what weapon we're at. Uh, start eyes where um, eyes where we are. Start eyes where we have uh, we're starting from, which at the beginning of the game is going to be zero. We're searching for one um, one space beyond where we currently are. Yeah, add some code in there later. Um, yeah, I'll explain that shortly. So if gun search dot unlocked. So if the gun um, one one ahead of us is unlocked and search all right so this is if the gun the gun ahead of us is unlocked and the gun ahead of us is not equal to the gun that we are currently carrying. Go into this loop. If this, these both are true, then instance destroy current gun. Then we need to recreate current gun. I'm going to do depth just because I don't have a layer system set up. Uh, negative one for the depth and gun search the next gun we are looking for. Start I equals search. Okay, so um, I'm going to explain this right quick. So the for loop is going to loop through all of this code um, up until max weapons is hit, or as long as I is less than uh, max weapons, which is three. So I guess zero, one, and two, um, or three. I, I, sorry, I did this a few times, um, and uh, my mind's a bit blank. But uh, long story short, um, this just loops through the code um, until this value is reached. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna do a little trick here because if at any time during the loop um, loops that we go through. If both these conditions are true, then we're going to exit the code because we want all of these things to only happen once. All right, let's try that out. All right, so let's 
So, yep, we can sw swap through all the weapons. However, we can't swap beyond the last one. And I'd like to do that, so we're going to make this loopable by adding one to the max weapon. So we're searching beyond um, beyond our array. If we only do that, we're going to get an error because we don't have a uh, gun for. But that's what this line here is going to solve. So if we can determine that um, the search is, is um, it's searching for the position beyond where we are at. Before we go there, we are going to create, so search is going to equal zero. And that's going to allow us to loop through. See, we can loop through, but we can't loop down, so it's time to copy and paste all of this and change a few things down. Um, we're going to re reverse a lot of this stuff, so it's instead of eyes less than max weapons plus one. Um, we're going to do i is greater than negative 1, which is 1 less than our first weapon. i minus minus. Search again. We're searching behind us now. Um, this we want negative 1 as well because it's this value here. And search is equal to max weapons. Just in case you add weapons, you want it to be the very last weapon. And there is one extra line that needs to be added for some strange reason to make it perfectly loopable. All right, let's try that out. So it works up, so Green, red, blue, yellow, blue, red, green. Cool. We're going to do one more thing, which is we're going to make these other weapons false so they're not unlocked at the beginning. Already. And now this, these objects here, um, the code is pretty much the same for each of them. It's just indicating which weapon or which part of the array it's referencing. Um, and it's setting unlock to true. So when we collide with this object, it sets that unlocked to true and then it destroys itself. And let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, I am scrolling and I can't switch between weapons. Pick up the blue one and I can scroll in between both up and down. Blue, I pick up the red one, and then I pick up the yellow one, and all of a sudden I can switch through them all. So that's the basics of it all. Uh, thanks for watching.